we are going to pH that soil with this pH test today on Epic Gardening. Stay tuned, guys. All right, so we're going to pH the soil in the front yard. And first of all, let's talk about why we would even do this in the first place. For me, that's soil that I've never grown in before because this is a new place for me. So I have no clue what the soil's uh, pH is. So number one, that's the reason I'm doing it. But number two, the broader reason why everyone should do it, especially if you're growing in a spot that you haven't grown in before, is because every type of plant, and in fact all plants in general, require a certain pH range in the soil to make sure that they're able to uptake the nutrients that, that they require to grow. So we talk about plants needing light, water, nutrition, well, pH is sort of a gate on nutrition. If it's inside of a certain range, your plants are fine. If it's outside of a certain range, your plants are not going to be taking in the nutrition that you put in the soil. So you could have perfect soil, amazing quality of nutrition and, and organic matter in that soil, and then nothing will be able to be uh, absorbed by the plants. So we're gonna be using the Rappi Test pH soil testing kit uh, this actually comes with a few other different types of soil tests that I'll go over in other videos. So you need this <clears throat> or, or some equivalent of this. It comes with these testing capsules and what we're going to do is go out in the front yard and grab a soil sample, grab some water and mix those two together with one of these, see what soil we have or see what pH soil we have in the front yard. So let's go out and give it a go. One thing that you should consider when you're testing your soil is testing multiple spots. So this is my front yard, and I'm gonna ideally be putting in a permanent raised bed in the back here. So it makes sense to test the back, but what I'd like to do is eventually remove the jasmine there, uh, prune down this, this low quad tree right here, and then take out these rose bushes and this hibiscus, so I'll, I'll be growing in the front as well. So it makes sense for me to test both the back and the front, and see if I can get sort of a more normalized or average reading uh, for soil pH so I know what sort of amendments I should put in. So I'm going to go ahead and hop in the front yard and we'll go ahead and dig our samples out. Alright, so when we're digging our soil sample out, you're going to want a clean container and a trowel and you don't want to just take it right off the top, dump it in here and, and call it a day. You want to actually dig down, if you're going to do vegetables and fruits, around four inches or so. So I'm going to grab my trowel got kind of compacted soil which will be the, the subject of another video on how to deal with this. But you're going to want to dig down about three four inches and get a sample from around that area to get a real good sense of the underlying nutrition in the soil. I apologize for the wind guys, it's kind of a weird day here in San Diego. It's usually been pretty hot but lately I've been getting a little bit of this weird wind. So I, I'm about three, four inches down now. Make sure I get some of that surface soil out of here just so I get an accurate test. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab just about that much. You don't need a lot. You'll see how much you need. Okay, so we have our soil. We have our testing kit. We have a perfectly neutral 7.0 pH water and we have our capsules. So it's very simple, the next steps. All we have to do is fill this with soil, then fill it with water, give it a good shake, and, as, and add our capsules as well, and we are off to the races. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. It's important to not touch the soil with your hands because your hands can affect it. So I'm using a metal spoon just so I don't touch it. It's okay if we spill here. Just going to go ahead and add some of that in. Make sure I get to that soil line. Pretty much got it. Almost perfect. Now the next step is adding in the capsule. Alright, I have now chopped the top off of a capsule and I'm going to pour that on top of the soil. I feel like I'm in Breaking Bad right now getting my chemistry on. Alright, we've got it all in there. Capsule's empty. Next step is very simple. We just add our pH neutral water up to the water line. And 
and then we need to give it a good shake after we put the top on, of course. All right, let's shake this baby up. So after we're done shaking, what we need to do is let this soil and water and um, capsule rest for a bit in order to settle and settle on a true pH for us. So what I'm gonna do is set the capsule down or set the test down. You can see it's kind of bubbly and, and foamy. And I'll, you know what, I'll give it a bit more of a shake just to make sure. Okay, cool. So we're seeing some settling happen already which is great. But what I'm going to do is lower the camera a bit so you guys can see it settle in time-lapse style. So we will freeze right there. Okay, so it's settled and this is where we do the color matching and so it's important to do this in daylight which is why I moved outside because I had a different light on uh, inside my house which means that it would sort of taint the color and I wouldn't be able to get an accurate prediction so we're just looking for the one that matches it closely and of course it's never going to be exactly perfect but it can be pretty darn close and in my opinion let me know what you guys think this is looking somewhere between pH 5.5 and pH 6 somewhere in that range. I would go something like a 5.8 if I had to guess. And so what that tells us is that we have acidic soil and honestly probably a bit too acidic for what we're growing. So we're going to cut over to exactly how you might amend your soil based on this information. So the Rappi test kit comes with recommendations on how you might alter your pH. So if you found that like me, you have a bit acidic pH, somewhere in the range of 5.5 to 5.8 for me, unless I'm colorblind, which I actually am slightly colorblind, so hopefully I got that reading right, and definitely let me know if I didn't. Um, it shows you what you can use. So we've got dolomitic or calcic limestone, hydrated lime, iron sulfate, and aluminum sulfate as potential options. But of course, there are many other ways that you can amend your soil and change your pH. It lets you know how many units to use, as well as um, what, what you might want to use depending on the type of soil you have, sandy, loamy, or clay. And, and these units are pounds per, per 100 square feet. Um, so there's many different ways to do this. I might do another video in the future on how you might uh, amend your soil, maybe in an organic way or in an effective, cheap way. Depends on what you guys leave me in the comments. But stay tuned. Thanks for watching how to test your soil pH at home. And let me know if you have any suggestions or methods that you've used. Because I'm always looking to learn from you guys as well. Stay tuned. Keep growing. Happy gardening. Hit this video with a like and subscribe if you want some more stuff. And definitely let me know what you want to see next in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it.